Okay, so this is Ramesh Shapiro, part four. We're talking about the things he, we're talking about his focus on education, his accomplishments generally. And again, we, as we pointed out the first time, that he was ready to do correct ideas, the correct ideas that, that had the proper rabbinic backing, even if not everybody was for them. And uh, he did something revolutionary in, when he became a Rav in Glina which was to change the system of Malamdim. Now, again, these things to us are maybe sound obvious, but you always have to imagine when there is a, you know, a set um, system that, that, that's worked and is respected in Kalei Yisrael, to, to change things is understandably uh, met with opposition. So Malamdim used to get paid by parents. Now, that had two huge problems. One, because the rich kids got more attention, they're the ones who are paying better, and the Malamdim spent their time running around after money, right? So then he created the monthly salary system. That's it. Oh, you didn't get paid by the parents, the central body, and you get paid for them. He used that Cheder Klali model, which we mentioned previously, and etc. By the way, I just want to point out the Rid Al-Ghassi, Marid al who actually is a safer right you can't really show it, but if you see the saver behind me, I can't show you. But behind my right ear is a red saver. You go over a little bit, I notice is the standing next to the Minchas Chinuch, which maybe is more familiar. There's a two volume tall set. That's a Rid Al Ghazi. So here I read, here I read one time, did a similar thing also in Yushalayim uh, hundreds of years ago, where he split up the kids, I think already at age five, the ones who were more matim to stronger learning. He had one system for them, and the other kids had another system. The other don't were against such things, of course, but I'm just letting you know that. That, 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 that that's out there. Okay, so now, and always sensitive, as he, when he built his cheder Kloli in Glina, he believed a lot in outer appearances, and he built a very fine building, and he raised money, and he prodded the townspeople, and he didn't stop there. He made a, teacher, he made a teacher's institute. Let's read about this. Teacher's institute. And he wanted that the teachers would have you know, qualifications. Just think, how many qualifications do we man, demand from a shochi before it will be accepted the ritual slaughtering of even the smallest shtetl, right? The smallest shtetl. It's a tevian, 60 families. That's where Yaakov Kamenetsi was. You have a shochi? You don't just take anybody, of course. He must know all the re- relevant laws down to the last detail. He must have those laws well in mind when he does his work. And his hands move efficiently, so he doesn't make blunders. And of course, he has to have Yerushamayim. We won't trust him. Then after that, listen to this. What do we put into his hands? What do we entrust him with? An ox. Azure. Consider then what qualifications a malamid should have, a teacher in a classroom. When we trust him, our children, the young souls who will build and form the future of our people. These children are the foundation of Jewry's next generation. And that makes them the most precious possession we have. So again, that's... That's his so obvious his thinking, and he didn't stop there in Galina. He made a school, and he would come quiz the kids, and he made a small yeshiva gedola, and he got involved in problems in other towns. And his fame as an orator was spreading. Again, he's in his 20s now, uh, you can imagine. And people asked him to speak in different places. There's a, there's a cute story I like to mention that he went to a certain town, and I think I, you know, he was very, 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 very sharp and very, very quick-witted. And he used that, like we mentioned, as something he started to use in his father's house already, spinning in the Rei Torah and sharp comments. And we're definitely going to do more of these. So he, as he was walking into a certain town, there were pictures of secular leaders. You can imagine Poland back then, and it didn't find uh, favor in his eyes. And he told the rub of the town who was there, you know, he didn't like this. I don't know if I doubt it was in the shul, perhaps it was in the community center or something, and the rub was a little bit uh, taken aback. He saw things a little different. He was offended, and he says, what's your business coming from another? Well, what's your business? You're coming, you're visiting rub. What's your business to give me, uh, you know, give us musr? Oh, he says, so Mayor Shapiro <laughs> responded back, oh, you remind me of the story of the Tua Shore. The Tua Shore, those who know, is a famous, uh, very famous Akron, specifically in Hilke Shechita. Anybody learns Hilke Shechita in depth learn, learns the Tua Shore. So he says, a fellow came one time to, the, to a Rav and, uh, with a problem in the animal. Right? So the, the Shochit went along with the Shore owner, the ox owner, to ask the Rav whether it's kosher. 
So the Rav heard the problem. And he said, according to the Tvu Ashur, that animal is not kosher. Right? It means according to the Sefer, Tvu Ashur, it's not kosher. So the Shochet understood right away what he meant. Right? That in the Sefer, Tvu Ashur explains that this won't be kosher. But the butcher understand all he saw was that he's going to lose money. He starts banging the table and angry. What connection does it for sure have with my animal? Right? What's his business with me? What right does he have to come meddling suddenly in my affairs? That was the Ramirez's uh, sharp-witted response to this rub. End of section four.